uh, standpoint is the general idea because our general approach for taxes is to pay as little taxes as we're legally required to pay. So single, let's go through them. So if they're not married, the worst filing status is typically single for taxes generally, as opposed to, you could say that the married filing separate is worse than that, but you have a choice of filing married filing separate if you're married, right? If you're not married and you don't have a dependent, then you're, you're, you, the only thing you can file is single, which is usually kind of like the worst filing status. So you can check the single box at the top of Form 1040 or 1040 SR if any of the following was true on December 31st, 2023. So you were never married. Uh, you were legally separated according to your state law under a decree of divorce or separate maintenance. But if at the end of 2023, your divorce wasn't fi final and interlocutory agreement, you are considered married and can't check the box. Now, this is where the messiness comes into play. So obviously, if they weren't married, no problem, single, easy. Well, what if they're married, but now you have questions in terms of they're separated? Well, what does it mean? To, were they divorced uh, or were they separated? Did they stop living together? That's when typically you're moving from the federal law, possibly to the state law to have to determine what it means uh, to be to be separated because again if they were married generally the only the classes that they can file for are married filing joint married filing separate but if they're separated divorced or not married then you would think they would then qualify for single or possibly head of household depending on if there's a child involved Okay, so the, so you were widowed before January 1st, 2023 and didn't remarry before the end of 2023. But if have a child, you may be able to use the qualifying surviving spouse filing status. So now instead of getting divorced or separated, there's you're married, but the, the spouse dies. Well, if the spouse dies, then the question is, do you qualify for a qualifying widow uh, which is usually the case if there's a child involved, possibly, and then if not, then you're you know, you know you're going back to uh, the single. So obviously, single would be the worst if you qualify for a qualifying widow uh, or widower or whatever they're calling it now. Then that would be better from a tax standpoint. So married filing jointly. So this would be the default if you're married, of course, and it's usually beneficial, better than single. However, when you get into those credits, especially like an earned income credit and a child tax credit, which are refundable, which often have the most benefits uh, for people that have a child, which means we're not talking single to married, but possibly head of household, someone with a child to married, then you could have a significant impact and you want to kind of map that out to see what's going to happen from, uh, from single to married. We'll talk more about that later. So you can check the married filing jointly box at the top of form 1040, 1040SR if any of the following apply. You were married at the end of 2023, even if you didn't live with your spouse at the end of 2023. So you might say, well, when is the cutoff date to get married? Well, if they were, if you're married in 2023, even if it's in like December, then generally you're married before the cutoff. So so like I say, taxes probably shouldn't be driving your decision to get married or not, but uh, it might be able to drive the decision a little bit to say, should I get married in 2023 or wait till January, right? If it's a benefit to be married, then maybe you do it, you know, in, in the year that you're looking to get married. So you could file married filing joint that year, or maybe if it's not beneficial because of earned income credits and child tax credits, then maybe you wait, you just push it off to the, to the next year and get one more you know, year of possibly higher uh, benefits from those credit. I don't know. So your spouse died in 2023 and you didn't remarry uh, in 2023. So now on the other side of things, you were married, but now the spouse died. They died in the tax year, 2023. So it's not like we're not going to say now you're single for 2023. No, you still have married filing joint. That's the better benefit because obviously the spouse that died is still going to have income and whatnot. So it makes sense that you're going to keep the status of married filing joint in the year of death of the spouse, typically. So you were married at the end of 2023 and your spouse died in 2024. 
before filing a 2023 return. So that seems pretty obvious, but you know, they're sta- if they died in 2024, well, then you were married and he was alive, or he or she was alive. I'm, just, I'm assuming it's the guy that died, right? He's had a heart attack or something. But, but and there's died in 2024, then, you st- then you're still married for 2023. 